Oh, hi! My name is Yuichi Gray, right, from Salty Speed Science, and I wanted to make a really short video today, so here's what we're going to do. See this equation? You may have seen it before, for those of you who have studied a little bit of quantum mechanics. This is the Schrodinger equation. What does the Schrodinger equation do? Well, it pretty much does what Newton's second law does for classical mechanics. It describes how a quantum system evolves with time, well if you do the time dependent Schrodinger equation, which is the difference between this thing right here and the energy. And as most of you could probably figure out that energy equals T plus V, T being the kinetic energy and V being the potential energy, okay? That's what this V over here, this V over here is. That's potential energy, okay? So, like that. This is also T plus V. Well, what what is the connect, what's the kinetic energy in quantum mechanics? Well, we know that in classical mechanics, it's one half mv squared. Well, in quantum mechanics, scratch that out. In quantum mechanics, it's equal to the momentum times 2m, or, div or divided by 2m, excuse me. And then the Potential energy depends on the system. It depends on the certain system. We're just going to leave that as V. Okay? We're just going to focus on this. Okay? And you can see that this is already pretty similar to this right here. We already have the squared and the 2m. Well, now you, all you need to know is that momentum is equal to it's equal to i the imaginary unit you know square root of negative one um, times the Planck's constant we might even do a whole video just on the Planck's constant like that's how or this is the reduced Planck's constant because it has this little bar here right and then we're gonna have and then it's gonna be well, it's going to be gradient of all of that. Okay? Simple. So, we know that we take the, we just square all this. Well, if you know what i is, i equals the square root of negative 1. It's an imaginary number. There is no square root of negative 1. But, it, it, this is hypothetical. If we were to take the square root of negative 1, well, if we just square that, that's just going to equal negative 1. So this squared is going to equal to negative 1. So it's just this system multiply or negative. So negative and then the reduced Planck's constant is squared. So we're going to square this 2m and then we just square the gradient. See? That's the Schrodinger equation or pretty close to it. And then we have plus V, because we're trying to get the Hamiltonian. Equals the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics. We typically use the Hamiltonian over the energy thing, because it involves time. That's pretty cool. But, um, so, now that we have this, well, the very, very reduced Schrodinger equation looks like this. And if you know simple math, you know that these psi cancel out, and this is just h equals e. Okay? We've already stated that, but what's the psi right here? Well, this is called the wave equation, or the wave function. Wave function. And this is probably one of the most troublesome and complicated things in mathematics. Seriously, we are definitely going to do a whole video 
just on the wave equation or the wave function. Okay, it's weird. Okay, generally it follows this. Excuse me, um, kx minus wt. Okay, and there is no solution to this equation. It's so complicated. I'm not even going to describe it now. Okay, but this, so basically what this does is this allows us to, this, okay, so have you ever heard of the, uh, the particle wave duality, you know, how uh, quantum mechanical particles are actually both, they, they behave as both particles and waves, and have you ever heard of the double slit experiment, where basically if you have, if you shoot a beam of any quantum thing at the slit, or it's going to be larger, it's going to go out like this, then it's going to form this wave all along the wall like this. And this right here, the wave that it forms, is a representation of the wave function. So that's what that is. And cool thing, if you square the wave function, you get the probability density. I don't I don't know um Rob, uh, I'm not going to write the whole thing out. Probability density. You get the probability density. So like for example, at this tippy top right here, which if you've taken calculus one, you know you can find that by finding the derivative of, so you know that if, that you can find the highest probability if you take this and set it to zero the x is going to be the highest if, if you just do this then you'll find the highest probability of a system evolving in this manner if you know just the thing heads up so basically like the higher you go up on the slope the higher the y you go up on this the more probable it is okay and this is just the x plane okay and that's why if you just take the if you set the derivative to zero because the slope here is going to be zero Hopefully some of you know that, but we're getting off on tangents. Let's go back to the Schrodinger equation. All we have to do is take the Hamiltonian right here and add a psi. And what do we get? We get, oh, this is lagging a lot. Huh. Well, we're going to have to live with it. We're almost done with the video. Right? And then so please excuse the lag. And then we just um, multiply each thing by psi. I'm sorry if my thing is not very legible. I cannot um, see what I'm writing. It's so laggy. Okay, so here's the Schrodinger equation, right there. See, it's the same thing as up here. So yeah, now isn't that interesting? That's just a quick video, and I just wanted to ask you guys, do you like the new black background? Because I like it. It's more Khan Academy-like. It's professional. I like it. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my video. It's your video. Not very complicated simple. So, yeah, my name is Uchi Grarit from Solitaire Spade Science, and I am signing